congratulations Torquay on reaching Wembley from Lionel Blair, Michael Medwin and the cast of There's a Girl in My Soup. This week at the Princess Theatre, Torquay. Book now. To celebrate in style, this week is Nike Week at Tor Sports, Torquay and Paynton. Amazing free gifts with Nike shoes. Get yours now. From one great team to another, we're proud of you. From all at Weekend of Publications, the quality newspaper and magazine group. Congratulations to Torquay United upon reaching the 1989 Sherpa Cup final from Dutton Foreshaw, the local freight rover, Austin Rover and Maserati dealers. Congratulations to Torquay United on reaching Wembley from Sport Club 2000 for the best in top quality sports gear. Sport Club 2000, Philip House, Honiton Road, Exeter. On Friday afternoons at a quarter to five, talented people set out to prove, I can do that. Have they got the skills, the knowledge, the personality and spirit to follow demanding careers? Simon O'Brien assesses the efforts. I can do that on Friday afternoons at a quarter to five. But can you do this? Starting soon on ITV, you can see the best of British athletics and the international headline makers in a sparkling season of top events. See the best of the domestic competitions live and exclusive on ITV. We'll bring you the action and the drama, the triumphs and the disappointments. Watch the winners. Watch ITV, the athletics channel. Hello again. Well, now it's time for us to see how Torquay United got on in that historic uh, trip, pilgrimage, I should say, to Wembley. Let's now join uh, Pete Barraclough for highlights of that Sherpa Van trophy from yesterday. <laughs> to you. Well, at the start of the football season, I never dreamed I'd be saying these words to you, but here goes. Welcome to Wembley. Certainly one of the most remarkable success stories of the season. Torquay United, of course, playing Bolton Wanderers in the Sherpa Van Trophy final. It's the little club's own FA Cup final, and a quick look uh, down there, we'll see the growing strength of the competition. There's a celebrity match going on down there, and between 40 or 50,000 people here to cheer on the two teams. And that's three times the crowd for England's match with Chile in midweek. Well, let's just remind ourselves how Torquay and Bolton made it this far. Torquay started the road to Wembley back in August. They found themselves in the same group as Welsh side Swansea and Cardiff, and that 3-1 win at Playmore was enough to give them a place in the knockout section. A 3-0 win over Gillingham took them through to the quarter-finals. On paper, a tough game at Bath against Bristol Rovers. United settled the tie with this marvellous piece of skill from Mark Loram. Next, an equally hard task away to a Brentford side, fresh from a fine FA Cup run. But once again, Torquay confounded the critics. And so to the Southern Section final. United taking an early lead against third division leaders Wolves with that goal by Dean Edwards from Loram's corner. It seemed too good to be true. Indeed it was. The ball.
No one gave Torquay a chance in the second leg at Molyneux. Before the biggest crowd of the season, the goals again pulled off the impossible. Dean Edwards gave them a shot lead after a lovely ball from Mark Loram. Into the second half, and it's Loram himself curling in a free kick to give United a 3-2 win on aggregate. The goals are at Wembley. And what are the opposition? Well, Bolton have passed this way many times before, of course. But they were last here three years ago in the final of what was then the Sherpa Van Trophy, but were thrashed 3-0 by a rampant Bristol City. The Lancashire side are hoping for better things this time around. They've had an impressive route to the final, culminating in that controversial Northern final with Lancashire rivals Blackpool. Bolton won the first leg by the only goal at Burnham Park, but Blackpool hit back in the second leg with this penalty. So the leg went into extra time, and yet another penalty as the cross is handled in the box. Thompson slots home the spot kick to give Bolton a 2-1 aggregate lead. It's Torquay versus Bolton in the final. And this is what the fuss is all about, of course, the Sherpa Van Trophy itself, and holding it, Mr Michael Sinclair, chairman of the third and fourth divisions. This competition is becoming increasingly important. It's really uh, getting to a stage now where it's being accepted, isn't it? Well, I, I think we've got a situation where we've got today here over 50,000 people who've come to watch a club in the third division, Bolton Wanderers, um, take on a club in the fourth division, Torquay United, who, let's face it, only two years ago were within a few minutes of going out of the league. And I think it's evidence itself of the great interest in the competition and in clubs in the third and fourth division that you get this form of public support. And it's very much a family occasion. I mean, on the way down here this morning, my wife and I came down the M1, and we passed a lot of Bolton Wanderers supporters coming down. They were all families. And I'm sure if you'd driven up the other way, up the M5, you'd see exactly the same. And it's a lovely family occasion. So the competition's here to stay? I'm absolutely certain it is, yes. It'll get better and better. just full up at the moment, Pete. I just can't believe what's happening, really. You know, I mean, it's a tremendous atmosphere. we just come up Wembley Way and both set supporters are mixing and there's a, there's a nice atmosphere. The, the day's gorgeous, really. And I just, I just hope for everybody, you know, everybody can leave happy, you know, and uh, obviously hope we can win. That's the important thing. We could go out on this note in, in uh, league football, I think. What a nice way to go out. This is fabulous, isn't it? Great. What's the feeling like amongst the team? Very cheerful, very buoyant, aren't they, Kenny? Uh, they're in great mood. I think the lads are just determined to enjoy it. And an old thing in football, if you enjoy it, then you must be playing well. So let's hope, fingers crossed. You are the underdogs, aren't you? Well, we are. We've got to be the underdogs. Um, I think the lads have been the underdogs all the way along, third division sides all the way, and we've got another one in the final. I mean, we're not, we're not worried about that. Eh? So you're going to win? Yes, Not we're going to win. And a man you'll undoubtedly recognise, the uh, Football League referee Lester Shapter, playing a rather different tune this time, of course, as a member of the Devon and Cornwall Constabulary Band. In fact, Lester has uh, left the force but still plays with the band. And, of course, he's been here before as a referee, but still a marvellous occasion for him. Well, the players look pretty confident, didn't they? Let's hope that's a good omen. Soon, of course, they'll be uh, walking out for the second time, and for the uh, many Torquay United fans here, it'll be one of the highlights of what's been a very long day. Well, here we are at Torquay Coach Station, just after 7 o'clock on Sunday morning, the day of the final, but the game's still eight hours away. Well, thousands of Torquay United fans are beginning to arrive here, 
waiting to board the coaches that will take them to Wembley. But for one man, Sunday is a very busy day, and today's no exception. And this man could hold the key to Wembley's success for the girls. His name is Andrew Taggart, or to give him his proper title, the Reverend Andrew Taggart of Torquay's United Reformed Church, and he's also the club chaplain at Playmore and has been for the last eight years. Have you had to put up with some criticism about actually giving up your duties today to go to Wembley? Well, I have. Some people have wondered if it's right for a minister to give up and go to sport on a Sunday. And I am committed to these lads. It's um, a commitment I've made as their chaplain. And there were times three or four, maybe five years ago, when they were playing on Sunday to try and encourage more gates. And I supported them then. Uh, my religion is a seven-day-a-week religion. It's not just for an hour on a Sunday. And I want to impress that I'm going there to enjoy myself I'm going there to be entertained, but I'm going there also with a commitment on my heart for these lads. And I'll be praying there as well as in church. And has the Almighty given you any hints about the final score? I think he has suggested it might be 2-1 in the favour of Torquay United. And here along Wembley Way, tens of thousands of fans from both <laughs> Torquay United and Bolton Wanderers are making their way gradually into the ground. There really is a carnival atmosphere here, and Cyril's 20,000 strong army is enjoying the club's greatest day out. As the Yellow Army arrived at Wembley, the fans were more confident than ever that Torquay's name would be on the Sherpa Van Trophy. The support we brought up from Torquay and it's taken us 90 odd years to get here. I think, you know, with 20 odd thousand of us born and the local crowd of us, I think it'll be about 3-1. Some fans will do almost anything to see a football match. One Torquay supporter has flown halfway around the world to be here from Australia. Another has arrived from Spain, and John Hocking broke up his family holiday in France, as he told us. Well, on Friday I went to Brittany on holiday, took the wife and family across on the Brittany ferry. Um, midnight last night I caught the ferry back and arrived at Plymouth this morning at 6.30. 6 uh, come to the match and uh, return to Brittany for the rest of the holiday tomorrow. And you've left the family out in Brittany? I've left the family out there, and if I don't get back, I'm the only one with a passport, so they're stuck. <laughs> it's a bit over the top, isn't it? No, not at all. The only time talking will probably be at Wembley in my lifetime. Well, inflatable goals and dolphins at the ready. Those Torquay fans will soon be ready to greet their side as they come out of the tunnel. Join us after the break with our commentator, Peter Brackley. In the beginning, there was man and woman. Apple juice. Equal in all ways but one. Boys wet their nappies up front, girls in the middle. Till now, their nappies have always been the same. Now, there's new boy pampers for him and new girl pampers for her. Both have more absorbency power where it matters most. More up front for boys, more in the middle for girls. Even if we pour all the water in just these specific areas, it's all absorbed, thanks to Pampa's special core that locks wetness deep inside the nappy. A simple ring proves how dry it is. With dryness like this, you'll never be tempted to use any other nappies again. The driest boy and girl is a Pampa's boy and girl. Visit the unique Poldark Mine and experience an underground world you'll remember for years. There's easy access for all ages, and above ground plenty to entertain everyone for the rest of the day. Museums, a cinema and the Poldark Village recreate life in Cornwall in the 18th century. Plus, amusement centre, children's play area, Cornish pub, shops and restaurants will provide enjoyment for all the family. A Cornish day out to remember at Poldark Mine and Heritage Complex near Helston. I remember the journey to Kendal. And the peaks that made you feel so small. All those sheep. And the boats bobbing on the water. And if I told you how much it cost... What a memory. Well, it were only last Thursday. If you're 60 or over, <laughs> buy a senior citizen rail card and you can get your train journeys for a third off or more. Purcell Green Cap. Purcell Green Cap. Green Cap. Purcell Green Cap. Purcell Red Cap. Purcell Red Cap. You can now buy another Purcell liquid. 
original non-biological, with a red cap. Now Kame offers you more choice. There's still Kame Classic. But now there's a pure white bar with a delicate light fragrance, Kame Light, and a translucent glycerin bar, Kame Chic. The changing face of Kame. has become fact for Torquay United as Cyril Knowles leads out the Torquay side Bolton led out by Phil Neal and what a proud day for these two managers Cyril Knowles who would have thought two years ago when Torquay were just 30 seconds from going out of the league who would have thought that so soon after they'd be here playing in a cup final Phil Neal the Bolton manager of course has seen it all before not as a manager though, although he was back in 86, he led out the Bolton side then for the Sherpa Trophy final. They were beaten that day. This time he won't be playing. And Cyril Knowles and his team there wave to the crowd. Some 20,000 have made the journey up from the West Country today. And what an occasion and what a marvellous atmosphere too. The teams will be presented to the guest of honour today, the singer Elton John. And Peter alongside me here, Pete Barraclough, you've been part of the, uh, the build-up to the game all week. What do you reckon on the atmosphere today? I was really surprised how confident the players were in that uh, pre-match situation when we were talking to them earlier. I expected a few butterflies, but they all seemed very cool, very collected, and you never know, that might be a good sign, Pete, because uh, if it's all about psychology, then uh, Torquay won the battle already. So the teams now break to their respective ends. Tremendous noise around the stadium. The crowd here basking in the sunshine. And hoping that the match can live up to the occasion, I'm sure it will. And time for me, Pete, to hand over to our uh, co-commentator, who will be Theo Foley. Yes, Theo Foley will be joining us now, assistant manager at Arsenal. And he's had plenty to celebrate, of course, with Arsenal winning the title in such style at Liverpool last week. So let's have a look then at the lineups for this Sherpa Van Trophy final. And this is the side then that Cyril Knowles hopes can bring the trophy back to Torquay. He's a master tactician, Cyril, as he showed in the semi-final at Molyneux where Wolves were outwitted. So just how he'll employ this formation remains to be seen. Three central defenders, Elliot Lloyd and McNichol all included. Mark Lorham, it's the perfect stage for his undoubted talent today. And a little surprisingly, perhaps, Carl Airy preferred up front to Jim Smith. And what a day then for goalkeeper Kenny Allen. 37, released by Torquay last season. He then broke a leg playing for Bath. He joined Newport, who went out of the league. And now here he is back at Torquay and playing in a cup final. Well, Bolton have had a tremendous run since March. If they win today, they'll create a new club record of 20 consecutive matches without defeat. David Felgate's goalkeeping has been a major feature this season, so is the defensive stability of Mark Winstanley. And up front, well, Steve Thompson and John Thomas have scored consistently. And alongside them, Trevor Morgan, who's played a lot of his football in the West Country with Exeter and the two Bristol clubs. And he's the man that Cyril Knowles fears as much as anyone. And you couldn't have a better man in charge today, George Courtney, FIFA referee. And just a couple of weeks ago, he took charge of the European Cup Winners' Cup final in Bern. Barcelona against Sampdoria, and a marvellous game he had too. So as the atmosphere rises, the moment has arrived at last. And George Courtney prepares to set this Sheffervan Trophy final in motion. Torquay in their all-yellow strip. Torquay will attack the goal to our right in the first half. The bulk of their fans behind the goal they're defending. Torquay in all yellow, Bolton in the lighter shirts, the white shirts. And here an early touch, which I'm sure Kenny Allen will appreciate. 
in the Torquay goal. So Theo Foley alongside me here. Well on the uh, the heat and the conditions, what part do you think they're going to play today, Theo? Well, obviously, they, they'll play a very big part because uh, a lot of the players, quite rightly so, will want to conserve energy from the start and not be rushing around. It often leads actually to a much slower game, which is perhaps this is the best way to play at Wembley. If you play all out here, I'll tell you, you'll be well worn out in about a half an hour. And certainly the early minutes are going to be anxious ones for both sides as they endeavour to settle on this perfect-looking Wembley pitch. And Cyril Knowles saying beforehand he hopes his players don't freeze. Doesn't mean freeze in terms of feeling cold, but well, they might freeze on the occasion. And they haven't had a good run in either. They've won only two of their last eight league games. And Cyril was saying that he really felt the players were holding back a bit and had Wembley on their minds. Phil Brown knocking the ball in for Bolton. And safely through to Kenny Allen. This is McNichol. And Kenny Allen, I'm sure, must have pinched himself this morning to remind himself that he is playing in a Wembley final. Challenging well. Throw it through towards Edwards, but good covering by Barry Caldrill. This is Dean Crombie. The goalkeeper of Bolton is David Felgate, who missed out on the Sherpa Van final three years ago because his loan period had expired. So, relief for him. And he's in the side today. Win Stanley. Off goes Edwards. Crombie came across. And here's Caldrill. Steve Thompson spreading the play well. Morgan. goes John Thomas Brown well to get his cross in Allen stretching and holds on well and that will do his confidence no harm in the early stages there certainly do him an awful lot of good that the, the early opening uh, for me is that I think Bolton look as if they're going to play most of the football and Torquay's sweeper system I think obviously will be encouraging to hit one or two longer balls. This looks of, as if it's going to be a very, very good game. Let's hope so. Elliot across with a sharp, incisive tackle. Torquay with the three centre-halves, as we're saying there, giving the two full-backs the chance to push forward. Robbie Savage... Kelly chasing. Torquay throw. Threatened for so long to have a say in the playoffs to Torquay, but fell away towards the end of the season. And it certainly would appear that they were distracted by the Sherpa van success. And that marvellous win at Wolves in the semi-final, the Southern Area final. They lost at home to Wolves, but then beat them up at Molyneux. And who on earth would have predicted that with Wolves going so well? And Steve Ball, they were all playing. And Torquay won there by two goals to nil to go through to this final. Off goes Thomas with McNichol. And that's a corner. So most of the early enterprise has come from Bolton. They've sent up Win Stanley, their central defender. Edwards has come back to mark him. Made long towards Win Stanley. Got his header in. Kenny Allen was perfectly placed. Torquay have a match winner, it's Loram. 
And a good pass from him. Now, can Edwards get his cross in? No, but he's forced the corner. And now give heart to Torquay. A lovely pass from Laurent that sent Edwards away. There is actually a slight contrast in styles, Peter, in that uh, Torquay are hitting a lot more longer balls. Bolton attempts to build up slowly as the corner's taken. It might just have opened them up on that occasion. Felgate fisting it away. Eventually cleared. Kelly underneath it for Torquay. But what could be on here? Turn it through by Thompson. Now can Chandler finish? Well, it was a clear opening then. Chandler was away, Torquay suddenly caught on the break. A lovely pass played through by Thompson, and Chandler was clean through. There's the ball, not through into his path by Thompson. And Chandler steers it wide, but a good chance there. Yes, it was indeed. His first touch, actually, Peter let him down because he took it wide of the goal. He actually laid the ball, it was in the middle of the goal, he took the ball wide to his left. And uh, the lad Allen did well, he didn't get much to shoot at, and of course he just shot wide. That was a great chance, very good breakout. The Torquay have survived, and look to build themselves. Weston to Morrison, they're the two midfield runners. Morrison picking out Daryl Pugh. Now, can he take on Caldrill? He's gone all the way. And in fact, the ball over the line for a goal kick. Signaled by the linesman down below us. That's one of the one of the disappointing things I think uh, watching the first few minutes of this, Peter, is a number of players who get in good positions like that, and of course the final ball lets him down. It's a little bit sad because that was a very, very good bit of play. And uh, with the full backs pushed in as Torquay have done, you'll see lots and lots of that I'm sure happening during the course later course of the game. 20 minutes gone, no scorers yet. Thomas beaten. Here's Edwards. John Thomas. Foul then on Derby. Another rash challenge. So a free kick to Bolton. Who came through the northern area by beating Blackpool in the final. And that was a very tight struggle. And this one looks to be equally so today. Here's the free kick. Thomas just found a little bit of room. Lloyd had gone with him. And the corner. And Torquay protesting. Yes. Obviously the linesman who seems in a much, much better position than referee George Courtney. George Courtney's given the decision. Uh, which is, of course, his privilege being the referee. But... It's always a little bit surprising to me that, Peter. One man's 10 yards away, one man's 30. George sticking to his guns. He says it's a corner. Here's Savage. Allen was jostling for position there. He pushed Morgan out of the way. I think, uh, in fairness to the goalkeeper, Morgan was obstructing him, really. Oh, yes, but that was a very good take. I mean, he's, he's obviously just come in, but he's certainly enjoying himself because he took that with great confidence. And as you pointed out, he was... Slightly harassed, to say the least, by uh, Big Big Morgan. Did very, very well. What a story it is for Kenny Allen. It's quite remarkable, really. He's a postman now, I think. Really? He's not played a league game for some time. Yeah. And uh, Cyril Knowles said, well, we'll release you at the end of last season. And here he is now, back with them and in a cup final. He's always had a very good delivery today, Peter. <laughs> Morrison in well. Lorem. Now Pugh. They've got to take these opportunities to make progress down the flanks. The keeper thought about coming for it, stayed back. And in the end, away by Crombie. He certainly impressed me, the boy Lauren, when he's passing in that. There's the boys at Queen's Park Rangers. But uh, he looks very simple and uh, very positive on the ball. Early passes, early choices. And he's impressed me as much as anybody so far. And it's Lauren now taking the corner. A chance, and it's in! That was a very, very good goal, you know. Well worked. Very simple goal from a corner kick. The Bolton players obviously felt the goalkeeper should have come there, uh, Peter. But uh, that was a lovely flick, and he, and he took the goal well. But as I said, as far as I'm concerned, 
when they've attacked Torquay, they look much about his side. The keeper's clearly at fault, I would think. Well, Dean Edwards has scored the goal then that's given Torquay the lead. And the Torquay fans celebrating in style on the terraces now. Dean Edwards, the man who scored twice in the area final, has done it again here at Wembley.